Wander Over Yonder was such a fun show, it super sucks that it was canceled after only two seasons and a few shorts. But even though it was released on the Disney Channel, doesn't mean that creator Craig McCracken didn't sneak in a couple of jokes that went right over your head when you were younger. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and these are all the grown-up jokes you missed in Wander Over Yonder when you were a kid. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Super Nerd sponsor Tyler Siegel. Thanks to fans like Tyler, we're able to keep making videos and hosting live episodes another week. Want to help support Nerdwire too? Just click the link in the description box and see if any of our donation tiers are right for you. Broke is a joke, same. But don't worry, you can still help out by sharing our videos with your friends, hanging out in our live streams, and making sure you're subscribed and notified. Now on to the jokes! Number 13. When the Cluculons lose all the feathers on their lower halves, Lord Hater reveals that he's honestly kind of a prude. Ladybug locked us up together in the same cage all afternoon. And turns out we have tons in common. You know, Marinette, the girl I've got a crush on? Oh, yeah! Actually, it was you. Huh? Or that's what I thought, but after chilling with Alia that whole time... Yeah, well, we don't have to give her all the deets, do we? Oh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> Nuggets. Number 12. While the watchdogs invade Binglebore, Wander does his best to try to get them to chill out by asking them if they ever get tired of chanting and marching. Only, he phrases it in a very questionable way. He cannot be allowed to hear that message, Alia. If he does, I'll die of shame. Okay, okay, I got an idea. If Adrian's phone went to voicemail, it means the dude's busy, which also means you can get to it before he does. Hmm, I wonder where he'd be. Of <laughs> mm, course! He's got fencing club after school. That's why he didn't pick up. It ends in exactly 22 and a half minutes. You are seriously insane. You know that, right? <laughs> I don't know what Wander thinks Kate is willing to do, but I don't think that whatever it is is Disney Channel appropriate. Number 11. Time for a vocab lesson. Do you know what an animatic is? I just learned the word for it, even though I technically already knew what it was. It's a preliminary version of an episode or movie produced by shooting the storyboard in succession. Cool. Now that we know the actual word for it, dang, Wander gets a little too handsy with Sylvia and the animatic for season one, episode three, The Egg. Wait, I know how we can prove our feelings. Fuck her up. Not a chance, oh. kitty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure giving him the long stroke is what got John Lasseter fired from your company, Disney. Good call tabling that version of the episode. Number 10. Lord Hater is lonely as heck, and for a bad guy, he doesn't seem to be pulling in the kind of babes a guy needs to rule the universe. So when he threatens to blow up every planet if another date blows him off, Wander and Sylvia spring into action. Unfortunately, it only makes matters worse, and Lord Hater threatens to destroy the entire galaxy if Sylvia in disguise refuses to marry him. In order to save his pal from a lifetime of boinking Lord Hater, Wander objects to their wedding. Adrian! Adrian! Uh, Adrian? Uh... Yeah? Ah, uh, it must, it, uh, to go. Too dangerous. To leave. Can I put on my clothes first? Sure, <laughs> if you must. I mean... Shaming isn't cool, Wander. You can't just call your best friend a cheap whore. Number nine. Whoa there, slow down, Brad Starlight. How do you even know if her features are compatible with yours yet? Lucky Charm! Snorkel. Your lucky charm has a great sense of humor. At least you won't drown. Drown? That's the idea. Wasps don't like water. We may have to get a little dirty, Cat Noir. See, kids, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much, daddy puts one of his features into one of mommy's features and mashes them together until a baby is born. <laughs> Uh, no. Oh, yeah. okay. Number eight. In this episode, Sylvia's old partner comes back. But when she introduces him to Wander, things get real dirty real quick. I'm a disaster zone. I'll probably mess everything up in the end. Wow, Alia. Those are some <laughs> awesome designs. I didn't know you had such mad skills. Uh, thanks, Adrian, but I can't take the credit. These sick designs belong to Marinette. <laughs> Off the chain, right? You're super talented, Marinette. You seriously have a good chance of winning. <laughs> Um, yeah, I like, um, designs that, um, go upwards? Uh, 
already established, Sylvia's kind of a dirty horse. Makes sense that Ryder used to ride her. Number seven. In this short, Lord Hater has finally captured Wander and is ready to kill him. Unfortunately, our big baddie can't get it up. No! Her <laughs> hater. All guys say it never happens to them. Spoiler, it does. Number six. When the time comes for Lord Hater to finally kill Wander, Wander starts having some reservations about the big day. He wants it to be special, intimate, a moment where Hater can finally take out all his pent up energy and use it to really go to town on Wander. <laughs> You two need a hand? Thanks! They're insane on their rollerblades. Unstoppable on the ground. So, what if they're not on the ground? Two ladybugs? I'm in heaven. Everyone wants their first time to be special. Also, when Wander asks for mood music, these are definitely the V-card swiping lyrics you want to hear. My name is Andre, Andre Glacier, the sweetheart matchmaker. With one scoop or two, I'll find love for you with magical ice cream flavors. My name is Andre, Andre Glacier, the sweetheart matchmaker. With one scoop or two, I'll find love for you with magical ice cream flavors. I can't wait to destroy your body tonight is actually what the band She Wants Revenge wanted to call that song in the beginning. But the record label said it was less catchy than I wanna f***ing tear you apart. Number five, Thunderblast is clearly alcoholic and you cannot tell me otherwise. Why else did Emperor Awesome crash into Lord Hater's ship like a drunk driver? Yeah, this is a pretty good example of why not to drink and drive. Number four, while spying on Dominator and Emperor Awesome, Lord Hater sees his crush grab his rival by the buns and pull him into the smooching room. We can't stay stuck in this bubble together forever. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not sure what part of that guy's anatomy Dominator grabs, but it's either his butt or his ball sack, so that's fun. Number three, Lord Hater sends one of the watchdogs aboard Dominator's ship to spy on her and Emperor Awesome in the smooching room, while Peeper and Hater survey them. To their horror, the two start talking about Emperor Awesome's secret weapon, and Peeper starts losing his shiz, imagining what kind of powerful firearm Awesome is packing. But it's pretty clear that Hater has a different secret weapon in mind. I've watched how my daddy wins every election, and I'm going to follow in his footsteps. I know just how to win. By having the best campaign? Ha! Whatever. The secret to winning in politics is ruining your opponent's <laughs> reputation. Lord Hater's worst fear is that Emperor Awesome has a better dick. Number two. Wander and Sylvia vow to find the perfect place to plant their very special flower. But everywhere they go keeps getting messed up with drought, quicksand, and giant bees. Of course, they finally realize that Dominator is to blame, and that's when Sylvia says this. I look so good in a swimsuit. Dominator really is the biggest bee in the galaxy. Number one! This entire episode is clearly written to push the boundaries of Disney censors. The castle literally has a gigantic butthole on it! I didn't think you could have a butthole on the Disney Channel. I thought that they just sewed you up and you couldn't poop unless you broke contract. Like the whole Miley Cyrus thing was really just her trying to get her own butthole back. Miley, like, Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus? Yeah, like Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. She couldn't use her butthole and she was like, I just want control over this one aspect of my life. And the Disney Channel was like, absolutely not. And the guy who plays your brother is now a 37 year old man. And she was like, it's not worth it. And then she left, and then she pooped. I also love that it's called the Heine Council. That's a good butt joke. Hey! Hey! What the? Stay put, and you'll be safe. Huh? Uh, hey, what's up? Actually, there's plenty of good butt jokes in this episode. The writers took every chance they could to make butt puns, and almost every line in the episode is about butts. For example, when the head butler of the Heine Council describes the food, it goes like this. Whipped cream's too thick to swim in, but too runny to float on. And there's the Heine Council members themselves, which all have names like this. Uh, 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 all in all, 
it's a great episode that ends in one big fart joke. And surprise, Sylvia almost says a swear. If only you would let me uh, 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 give you some courage before you go. Uh, uh, wait, what? No! Uh, okay, which part of the word no did you not understand? Gross! You're not Adrian. He would never be so pushy. Those are all the adult references I could find in Wander Over Yonder, but I want to know which ones I missed in the comments. Like and subscribe to Nerdwire, click to the left of my face for more videos, and I'll be back next week to ruin your childhood.